Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be going car spotting in London. I've been wanting to do this ever since I saw this place when I was a kid, but let's get going. For those who don't know, London is a place where you can see some insane supercars, especially in the summertime. Why is this? Well, there are many wealthy Arabs that live in the Middle East that have more oil than money, and as a result, they can buy a lot of supercars. You'll see these supercars in London all over YouTube and Instagram, like this particular video. But with my luck, I wasn't as successful, for the most part. So if you do not like this video, please dislike and unsubscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. Okay, since those people are gone, let's take a look and see what Central London has to offer. All right, we got our, we got our first car. Uh, burgundy Bentayga, I guess, to match my flannel. Here's another Bentley. This time that is the Bentley Mulsanne. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> there's another Mulsanne. I never see those. I see, like, the Flying Spurs and Bentaygas a lot, but not those. X3 M40i, which is uh, has the same engine as the Toyota Supra. The B58, which is quite tunable. Pretty cool underrated SUV, but I'd still get an M340i sedan. And we got another Benteg over here, this time all blacked out. You notice a lot of these anti-theft things on the steering wheel and on it, I would definitely recommend. Oh wait, I just realized that this is an extended wheelbase version, but yeah. Definitely put one of those on, I guess, if you have a car in London. I do think the facelift Bentayga looks a lot better than the non-facelift. And this thing, <laughs> well, it needs more than a facelift. It needs an entire redesign. I'm not even gonna show you the grill on that thing. And then over here, we have a P525 Autobiography Range Rover extended wheelbase. And that right there is pretty cool. Okay, we got a G63. And an i8. I guess this is like a good start. A lot of people hate on this car. I actually really like how it looks. It still looks like a concept car. It's aged very well. And yeah, it is a three cylinder, but now you can get them pretty cheap on the used market, relatively speaking, because they've depreciated quite a bit. Oh, brand new Range Rover extended wheelbase. I'm sorry if the vlog is kind of boring so far. I just can't seem to find anything. Okay, finally a Ferrari, but my least favorite Ferrari. That does look like it's seen better days, but it's still a Ferrari. Decent start. What is this? Oh, huh. it's pretty cool. I'll probably get called out for it in the comment section somewhere. All right, we got a Rolls Royce Cullinan. It's, I guess, our first true, like, real luxury car. I guess you could count the Bentleys as well. Okay, now we're actually talking. First supercar of the day. This is an Audi R8. Second gen, pre-facelift. I think I prefer this to the facelifted version personally. Debadged, looks good. It's probably a wrap, I'm guessing. Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, X5, Evoque. But up here, oh, I didn't even see the Aston. We got an AMG GTS. And an Aston Martin repeat. I'm gonna cross here. Wow. This is a when this came out, I always thought it was such a beautiful car. And it still is. I mean just the long front nose proportioned beautifully. This, especially in the solar beam yellow color, is absolutely amazing. But on the topic of good looking cars, we have the Aston Martin Rapide with Oh, that doesn't look very good. That aside. This is, to me, one of the few four-door cars that actually looks like a four-door coupe. You got, like, the 6 Series Grand Coupe, well, no, the 8 Series now, the other CLS, but those don't really look like a coupe. This actually just looks like an Aston Martin DB9, but longer. And, I mean, how could you argue with a naturally aspirated V12? These things sound absolutely incredible. Yeah, cool to see one of those. Okay, so you can't quite see it, but that looks like a GT3. Rolls-Royce Phantom, Bentley Bentayga, and you might have heard it, but that sounds like a Huracan to me. And then I can see just 
That little triangle thing on the side indicates to me that that is a Lamborghini Urus. I was correct. A Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Ooh, that thing is gorgeous. Look at that. This was the Rolls Royce that I spotted earlier, but drove away. The silver roof with the blue, very classy. Um, I guess you could call it an old man spec. And this is a Ghost extended wheelbase. They did make an extended wheelbase version of the Ghost. Pretty cool, there's someone in there. And there's the Huracan again. The Defender, another Range Rover. There's a lot of Range Rovers here and a lot of S-classes. Phantom drop head. I always had a soft spot for one of those. It looks like a Maybach van. And there's the Huracan again. I'm trying to see if there's anything over here. Might think about go to the Dorchester at some point. So we got another blue Bentega and then an Aston Martin Rapide. That one's the facelift. It has like a larger grill. It's still very pretty. Hey, we got, don't know what model that is because it's D-Badge, it could be a Carrera, it could be a Carrera S, GTS. Got a Rolls Royce Wraith, oh my God. <laughs> All right, that's, uh, it's pretty showy, to say the least. Decided to go down a little bit of a side street and I found this, the Phantom from 2004. This thing is absolutely massive. So the hood is almost as tall as the one on the Range Rover. I'm sorry, it's a bonnet, not of a hood. I'm so sorry. I got to, you know, practice my British terms. But anyway, really cool. And I would love to be chauffeured in one of those one day. Okay, we have a 911 Carrera 4 GTS. A Taycan. And up here, a couple of cool stuff. Looks like we have a 911 Turbo S. This is pretty cool. We have a McLaren GT. I feel like I've seen this car like a, a while ago. And a Ferrari Portofino, which I really like the look of this thing. This is replacing the Cali T. And the California, as I mentioned earlier, is not my favorite looking car, but this is like beautiful. The McLaren GT. This car, I think there's an issue with this because McLaren just had too many models. And like, it's not that much different from like a 570S when I came up when the 570S uh, before that was discontinued. And it's just a little confusing, but it is a beautiful looking car. Shame McLaren's reliability is terrible. Okay, so it looks like we have a 911 Turbo S Cabriolet. Nope, it's normal. Decided to go down another side street and we also have a Portofino. <laughs> and a blacked out Urus. And this looks like an M8 competition. And it has the carbon ceramic brakes, which are quite an expensive option. And then this, a Range Rover Evoque Coupe. These are quite rare. They didn't make a lot of them. And then obviously this thing's pretty sick. What is this? Uh, it looks, oh, it's obviously a Honda. Huh. It's like I saw this somewhere. Honda E. That looks quite interesting. Looks like we also have another 911. Targa for GTS. I also noticed there's a McLaren dealer over there, so I think I'm going to head inside over there. Okay, so I'm inside of one of the cars. This is a McLaren GT. Looks very similar to the 570S. What I always like about McLarens is the paddle shifters. So you can push them like this, but you can also push them like this. If you, if I pull this paddle tube towards me, look at this one. So when you're driving with one hand and you upshift, you can also downshift by going like this. I think that's a really cool feature. And 
out of all the paddle shifters I felt in cars, I think McLaren's are my favorite. It just has such a nice click to it. I also like that it stays with the steering wheel. When I was driving the Huracan STO in Italy, the paddle shifters were on the column, so they didn't move, and I prefer when they move with the steering wheel, but that's mostly personal preference. Uh, I love the matte carbon fiber, gloss black. This will probably get a ton of fingerprints, but it looks great right now. Got a glove box, which, oh, the car's off you got the optional bowers and open sound system you have some really beautiful leather seats and then you also have like a little thing in the back i think mclaren was trying to make this thing a grand touring car it's funny because i was kind of shitting on this car <laughs> earlier because i saw so many of them but it's cool to be finally inside of one and then um to, to open the door you pull this up and then it goes up supercar style and then you get out. What's also really cool is this thing has soft closed doors. And the paint in this car has like a little bit of a blue flake to it. And so what they did was they tied it in with the blue stitching and piping on the seats. It's a really nice touch. So this was the McLaren GT. We also have two 720s spiders and the McLaren Artura. Uh, the 720S was the first supercar I ever got a ride in. It is incredibly smooth and it is insanely fast. Like, it's unreal. Um, when the 720S first came out, these headlights got a lot of controversy. Also, you can get them in carbon or no carbon. Carbon, I think, looks better. Um, you also have uh, the carbon fiber mirrors on this car. What I really like about McLaren's though is the paint. So I was mentioning the paint on that car, but on this one, you can see there's like a, a flake in it. Uh, I started really discovering this when Shmi 150 did his Orion Purple 675 LT Spider, where he put the cerulean blue paint, paint flake from his 675 LT Coupe within the purple. Unbelievable, it's quite complicated. You can watch his video on it and it'll probably be a little easier to talk about, but really really cool and um yeah and i like how this thing kind of flips up when you go inside of it and this is another 720 but this one is the mclaren artura the new v6 hybrid supercar from mclaren um this is replacing the 570s some people don't like the fact that it's a v6 but um based off of the sound clips it sounds absolutely fantastic um and then on the inside oh wow that looks like ambient lighting that's really nice Orange piping on the seats. A little bit of an upgrade, frameless mirror. That's really nice. But yeah, decided to pop in and take a look at some of these cars. And shout out to McLaren of London. What? I might catch it. Literally in a McLaren dealer and then a Senna passes by. Of course with my luck, I'm in the McLaren dealer and then a freaking Senna passes by. Barely get it on video. <laughs> It's not a Senna, but we got a Rolls Royce calling in again. Oh my gosh. What is that yours? Oh my gosh. Got another calling in in blue. And a cab. Also down there, we have a Rolls Royce Phantom. We got an Aston DB11. So the plan is right now is I'm actually going to be going to the Dorchester Hotel, which you've probably seen all over the internet if you watch London car spotting videos. And that's in Mayfair, which I haven't gone to yet. And that's another great area to see some cool supercars. So let's see if we can find anything. Look at that 720S. Down there we have a blacked out Rolls Royce calling in that I'm blocking it through a tree. Bro, what? That is like the biggest disappointment. There's a seven series of Bentley, a G Wagon. Like, sometimes there's Koenigseggs parked out here. This is lame. Well, it seems that Blue with silver roof is a common theme with rolls because this is the second one I've seen. This one being a newer Phantom. 
I absolutely love the Phantom. I just think it is my the ultimate in terms of luxury. I like it way more than the Cullinan, and I feel like when you pull up somewhere and you get out of a Phantom, I don't know, you just feel like a celebrity. I don't know what the hell that thing's doing though, driving up on the curb. Oh, and another Range Rover. On another side street, we have an Aston Martin DV9 that is in desperate need of a wash. But still, I mean, such a beautiful car. Designed by Henrik Fisker. I mean, just little details like, look at this. This is where the gas cap is. It's so, oh, excuse me, the petrol cap in the UK. But it's just nice that it's hidden over there. Um, very subtly place and then we have another ferrari portofino this theme is um in terms of like performance cars ferrari portofino and mclaren gt i've just seen t so many of those these wheels are nice quite like that nice interior pretty well, pretty nice spec so we're at this i think it's called the berkeley hotel um there's sometimes like festive lights during the Christmas season. I've seen pictures of Chiron's here, but unfortunately, there's no Chiron. All we have is a Bentega and a Urus, which we've seen a lot of already. <laughs> and of course, the one car I really wanted to film was gone. Oh, no way. That's the new XM. I've actually never seen one up close before, and my God, it is hideous. Wow. It's massive. Yeah, nope. Not a fan. So we have a Rolls Royce Cullinan over there and a Rolls Royce Phantom. And a 7 Series. And a police car. And a Flying Spur over there. So I was about to give up until I walked around this corner and out of the corner of my eye I saw this Pista. And then I found the center that I've been looking for <laughs> and hunting down. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's first talk about the 488 Pista because it is an absolutely gorgeous car. Ferrari did a beautiful job styling this thing. I especially love the rear, how aggressive it is. You have the dual exhausts here, an F1 inspired rear fog light with a massive carbon fiber diffuser. And what's kind of a cool quirk is air goes through here and escapes, but the Ferrari logo is centered and it is popping out which I find kind of interesting. And what I love about the coupes is you can see into the engine bay. And then, these wheels, these wheels, these wheels, perfect, perfect wheels. Um, what I also really like is the interior. You have the bucket seats, but it's all leather and I'm a big sucker for tan leather. It is absolutely beautiful. Got carbon ceramic brakes, got the stripes going down the hood. You have a little air duct right there, which is probably great for rocks on the windshield. And yeah, just absolutely beautiful. But let's get to the star of the show, the McLaren Senna. Named after Aaron Senna, the legendary F1 race car driver. This thing is an absolute beast. It is so quick around the track. And this particular one is actually from Qatar. What I like about this is the matte carbon fiber finishes throughout. I just, I, I actually have a soft spot for matte carbon because sometimes glossy carbon can be just a, a little too much. Um, so this makes it a little bit more subtle. You also have blue piping along here and all, all around the car. Um, if you ever see a Senna with two exhausts, um, that means it is a lot louder than one with three exhausts because of regulations. I'm not sure how it is in Qatar, but in the U.S. we get two exhaust tips. But if you were to buy a Senna in Europe, you would get three exhaust tips, and it's a lot quieter. Moving on, we got to talk about this massive wing for a second. It is just crazy how large the wing is for a production car, even though now the GT3S, the new one, is even larger, I think. But it is amazing. Just to just look at it. It's like a piece of art. you got the matte carbon everywhere. It's just... Yeah, it's gorgeous. This right here is cool because you have air coming out of here in these different slats. In person, it, it's it's really interesting to see. It's difficult to capture this on video, um, but if you do ever have the opportunity to see a center in person, really just take in the design because it is really, there's just a lot going on. I love these wheels. Got the center, ca center caps, um, blue brake calipers. You have a blue detail here with a silver, Stripes look like 
actually these might be hand painted i'm not 100 percent sure um then moving on to the interior which is just this absolutely beautiful electric blue matching the exterior of the car I, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this interior and it's got the Senna logo on the headrest which I'm guessing is an MSO option what's cool about the Senna though is you have these glass windows on the bottom of the car uh, most Senna's I've seen at least in the US you can get these tinted but these were not and when it actually drove by I saw the passenger's legs which is hilarious um what's also really cool is if you look at this right here on the mirror it says p15 this is definitely an mso option p15 was the code name of the chassis for this particular car before it was named senna what i also really like is this air intake a roof scoop is just so cool the the sound that you get from the turbochargers when you're sitting inside is probably amazing i, I would love to hear it one day but just dreaming about it for now it's a nice continental and then we move on to the front. So you got a little bit of inspiration from the 720S with the headlights. Um, some more blue stripes and silver stripe details. You have Senna on the hood. But just look at this right here, how it, it's insane. And these you can get uh, painted. Um, this particular car has that painted. Um, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that detail. Like This car is definitely, uh, not the sexiest car in the world I, it, a lot of people didn't like how it looks but this is one of those cars that it's okay if it's not the most beautiful car because it is all about function over form unlike the bmw grill which is just absolutely hideous wow that spec on that gt3 touring is wow that was beautiful Okay, I was about to give I was about to give up until I found this Aston Martin Vantage. Okay, cool. Bentega. But 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 I mean come on. We've seen like a thousand of these already. This is the star of this particular lineup. A Lamborghini Aventador, just the plain old Aventador with its lift up and in desperate need of a wash. But even though it's absolutely filthy, it is absolutely gorgeous. I, I just, mm, it's crazy. Like this car came out in 2012. That was 11 years ago. And it still looks this good. Don't get me wrong. I love the, the Revuelto, I think it's called. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. But the Aventador, like this was like my childhood dream car that everyone wanted one of these things. I mean, just look how wide it is. Look at that exhaust. I mean, from the factory, you can shoot flames. And if you get an aftermarket exhaust, oh my God, forget it. You're going to literally make everyone deaf. What's also cool is these things come up. And my personal favorite thing is the engine. So, so you see those numbers right next to under V12? That is actually the firing order of the engine. And for anyone with OCD, the engine is actually not centered with the car. It's slightly off-centered. So if you have OCD, this car may not be for you. <laughs> but, I mean, this is just absolutely stunning. I just think the normal Aventador Coupe is just still amazing. I mean, look at these DRLs. Unbelievable. Now we have a Maserati Grand Cabriolet. I remember when these were everywhere. They're not as easy to come by now. Um, horribly unreliable, but man, the engines, the engine on that thing is just a work of art. That thing, that sounds just, it has like a soulful sound to it. Porsche Taycan, that has a Range Rover Sport SVR, a Defender, I'm not sure if that's a 525 or not, but regardless, it looks badass. We have a Huracan Technica. That is clean as fuck. So I'm close to an area called Brick Lane, which is where I'm staying. GLE 63 S. Um, X5 M50 D, actually, I think. And a Ferrari California T with blacked out badges. This is pretty nice. Yeah, I like that. It's nice. I actually have a soft spot for silver wheels with a red with the yellow brake calipers on a Ferrari. Okay, well, that about does it for today's video. 
I hope you all will tune in next time where I fly British Airways from London to Paris. And until next time, I will see you all in the next video.